Well, joining us right here on Marawa TV is Morgan Goldie. He's way taller than what I am. Uh, I couldn't be a basketball player even if I tried. Morgan Gold, thank you so much for joining us right here on Marawa TV. Yeah, yeah, man. Uh, you know, it's always good to do these type of interviews, you know, very relaxed, chill, have fun, yeah. You broke the news on Marawa TV? Yeah, yeah. To yeah. say breaking news, I am joining Stellenbosch. Yeah, I had to, you know, because uh, one thing I must say, Marawa TV has done a lot for me. So I think I owed it just to break the news that on the right platform. And what a platform it is. You've now joined Stellenbosch. You are an experienced campaigner. You've won all the domestic cups in South Africa. You were footballer of the year. You've won the league four times. If you think about it right now, did you ever think your career would pan out the way it has growing up? No, I didn't actually. You know, it's, it's one of those things where I, I, for me, football was a way out of, out of the, how could I say, the bad habits and the bad ills of the townships, you know. So I, I took football. It was an eye-opener for me and football's taken me places, you know. Who would have thought I'd come to Cape Town at the age of 36 and still be smiling about the game, you know. I was saying to you that at age 36 you still have a chance to surpass John Shoes Mosheyo who was at age 38 playing against Nigeria for the national team. Ah, no chance, no chance. Uh, Why it's, not? it's a good dream. Uh, we all have dreams, but you know, we need to grow um, the next generation. And, and honestly, if I really love the game, I should look at the next generation, give them opportunity, yes. Uh, I, I would love to work closely and try to mentor players that are in the national team or be part of the national team setup. But, you know, it's, it's one of those things where I need to still do a lot of uh, research and coaching and, you know, like maybe technical advising and see how the game is played from the other side. Are you going for your coaching badges? Yeah, I'm working on it. Um, did my D license. So, you know, with a footballer's schedule, you know, you need to squeeze it in there. And I'd love to do my UEFA license, actually because I think it's more recognized and more there's, there's a lot of, lot of more insight on the game and they give you the opportunity to do a fast track one which uh, a fast track one is actually if you've spent 10 years in the game and you played for your national team you've been you've served actually basically what a D and a C does for you so there's always been that debate about uh, former players who've really made it and want to give back to the country. When would you like to do this? Oh, when my legs can't run anymore. I think um, when I feel I don't feel the passion and the desire when I wake up every morning, come into training or even have that anxiety attacks when <laughs> I'm about to play a game, you know, where the butterflies go away. That's when I, I think uh, I'll call it quits. Do the butterflies really keep you on your toes? Yeah, most definitely. I mean, it keeps me going, actually. And, and I want to be a role model for my kids, you know. I want them to be able to watch me and say, you know, I watched my dad playing. He, he put his life on, on, on hold for a lot of things that, for the game, actually. So I, I want them to just look at me and say, you know, what, I want to be like my dad and better in whatever field they do. So you were saying you came to Cape Town and it made you smile knowing you can come to the mother city, join Stellenbosch, who've just been promoted to the PSL. Yeah, um, I mean, I'm a guy that loves taking a challenge. And the challenge to me was coming here, assisting, helping, and at the same time continuing the love for the game. And just, I'm not here to plow back, no. I'm here to be part of a team that wants to achieve a little bit of a milestone for, for the Wineland area. You have that experience. You are a seasoned campaigner. As I said earlier, you've won four PSL titles. What does Morgan Gould bring to the team besides just the experience? I think I bring a lot of... I want to show a lot of the guys that haven't been playing with me, actually. I actually got a lot of good comments because half of them were saying, ah, oh, we thought you were this arrogant, egotistic guy but I, I want to bring humbleness you know I want to bring I want to show them hard work as as, as you create your own luck when you work hard yes you can have the talent and but talent is not good enough in this game why do people think that Morgan Gould is arrogant 
You know, when you see someone and you don't know about the person, uh, you, you, you have your, your impressions of whatever, you know, whatever you think of the person, you think, ah, because I was at the biggest teams or one of the biggest teams in the country, you'd probably think I've, I'm coming here just to chill and relax. But uh, the coaching staff can tell you that I put in a good shift and, and I, I want to I bring that mentality and pass it on to the next generation. You were talking about helping uh, players. I saw you when you came to join the guys in the indoor. You were like half coaching on the sidelines. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's you know, you know, these guys that I play with right here. You know, they, they, it's a lot of a lot of these kids are just pure talent, pure. And I want to teach them as, as pure talent is not good enough. They need to work hard, and they do. Trust you me, they do. And and they're coming to a phase where in NFD they were the best they're coming to a place where in the PSL everybody's the best it's just how good you are on your day you joined Kaiser Chiefs your dad also played for Kaiser Chiefs yeah yeah how was that knowing that your dad was this great player too and then Morgan Gould joins Chiefs lady luck uh, lady luck uh, I think it, it was coincidental that I chose to move to Chiefs but at that time that was the right move for me and I'm very grateful for, for him laying a foundation when I go there and things would be easier, which it wasn't really easy because I was dealt with a couple of blows, I had injuries. But I, I managed to come back um, as they were writing me off. I managed to come back and put a smile on my own face because it's not about how people perceive you, it's how you wear your own mask and go out in life. You're talking about that perception, the criticism, the, the thoughts that people have of you being this guy that's full of himself. But you seem to be someone that's very determined, very motivated to succeed every single time. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, when I pray, I pray for success. I don't pray for a lot of different things. I just pray for success. I, I want to be successful wherever I am. Because if you're successful, that means it's not about the riches. It's not about the, how can I put it? It's not, it's not about the materialistic things. things. Yeah? Yes, it's more about fulfilling yourself and fulfilling those around you. And, and I try by all means to, 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 to try and be successful at whatever I do, whatever I touch. If your dad had to have a conversation with you right now, what would he say to Morgan Gould? They probably tell me I'm not a good footballer, <laughs> but yeah, I, I think I actually surprised him also. I think he, he, he was one of the guys that people used to look up to and I'm like, what do you guys see in this guy? And, but then later on I was told and I saw, but I think I surpassed him this time around. Were you emotional when you saw what your dad achieved? Yeah, I was a bit emotional. And knowing that I was playing football also at the time, I thought, yes, I've got a tough task because he, he was loved by the people. So I needed to go out and do twice as work, twice as hard, be more determined, you know? Yeah, so. Joining Stellenbosch and a team, um, we've seen it before where teams get promoted from NFD to PSL, sometimes the next same season back again. You know, it's tough in, in this league. Definitely. That obviously, if you hear, it's not going to happen. Listen, I can't guarantee you that, but, um, but what I can guarantee is we're going to put in a good shift and people are going to know about Stellenbosch as a team and they're going to know that I, I, I'm not here to be a prima donna. I was never a prima donna and I'll, I don't think I'll ever become a prima donna. I want, whether we go down or we stay up, I want to make a difference. And, and the difference is changing the narrative of, of the next generation because the, it's, it's, it's easy for us to judge as older players. But if, what are you doing and being an older player? What are you doing to change the narrative? Are you just going to walk away and say, so-and-so is not good enough? Assist and give back. Who's the one player in South Africa? I mean, you're a solid defender. 
and you can also play as a defensive uh, mm. midfielder. But who's the players that you really look up to in South Africa? A good friend of mine, Jabu Malile, because for me is the most underrated uh, midfield, most underrated set piece taker, most underrated person in, in, in South African football. Because if, if I look back in my career, he was the guy that put me on the map because he'd deliver good balls and we'd score via set pieces. That's how we won the league, but still he doesn't get <coughs> sorry, the required recognition. I, I feel for him, but I think it's very strong in terms of he does it week in, week out. And look, his team went into the top eight. Still, he doesn't get recognition, you know. But for me, I've always told him that I still, rec I still think he's one of the best, currently the best midfielder. What drives Morgan Gold? Ah, I think there's a lot of things, you know. I, 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 because of my background, uh, it wasn't really a good background. Where I grew up. Why wasn't it good? You know how it is when you come from the townships, man. It's, it's, it's either it's two ways. It's either you become good or you become a bad. And my parents made it a point that they don't want me to go down that route. Um, and they were very strict. Although I thank them today because I see what the strictness that they uh, dealt to me has actually worked out for me in a very positive way. Uh, so what drives me is just being, being humble, being nice and waking up every day smiling, no matter the circumstance, you know, I mean... If you look at your situation, there's always someone that has it tenfolds worse. There's someone that doesn't have a leg but is still trying to get a job. Or someone that doesn't have an arm. That There's so many amazing things that I, <clears throat> I draw strength from, you know. And there's people that like David Kekana is late today because, look, he, he, he was one of the guys that also did a lot for the game, but he's no longer. But we need to be grateful that we're still alive and we can still change a bit in this world. So how have you adapted to Cape Town? Have you seen the Winelands? Have you gone to any sightseeing? No, uh, not yet. I'm afraid that if I do see anyone, I'll probably be camping there instead of <laughs> at, where, at, at SAS, you know. So I'm a, more of a beer guy. So yeah, maybe I'll acquire the taste of wine. So beer, that is a zero beer or normal beer? No, you put it well, uh, zero beer. Perfect for me, especially after a game, you know. Let's talk about your NGO. You also give back to the communities. You've got a, you've got a big heart to give back. Yeah, I've got a big heart, you know. Um, sometimes it's not big enough. Uh, it's always good to give back, you know, because I feel I come from those circumstances and if I can give one kid a, a chance in life just to think about something different um, we as MGKs we try and not eradicate poverty or eradicate problems because you can't do it over one one thing or one meal but give the kid opportunity to meet their idols and and share day or hour with their idols so they can see that but this person's only human this person's right here in front of me why can't i become or try and become what they are so i, I try and give kids the opportunity just to mingle with celebrities mingle with their sports stars and see and maybe that will change their their thinking part of the ngos also to have a soccer tournament yeah soccer netball a bit of aerobics. We this year we dealt a blow because I'm not around and I put it on hold because I like to be hands on and my people know I'm I'm, I'm very hands on when it comes to a lot of stuff. Uh, even with my clothing brand, I'm I'm, I'm hands on with it. I was about to ask you about his uh, clothing brand. You'll always see him wearing it. MG. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I think that's also part of the how I started uh, my clothing brand the um, MG, MG Cares, you know, it was an idea that I came up because, you know, when you come from the township and you've made something of your life, it's always a point where you need to give back. And the only way I felt that I'll give back if someone 
purchases something from me, they get something in return and they're giving back into their own community. So it's a win-win for both parties. So that just grew on to me and I, I, I fell in love with the whole clothing cap, you know. So I'm a, that's the type of dress code I like, you know, like just very chilled vibe because I'm a footballer. What's the music you're listening to at the moment? Yo, I go, um, <laughs> I go wild with music because I don't have a certain genre that I listen to because of my age. And I'm learning new things like the new, like Drake. Um, there's a lot actually. Give us like a line or two of Drake. Yo. <laughs> I don't actually have a line, specific <laughs> line, but... Um, what's, the, what's the jam you're listening to right now, Drake? Ah, I think I'm listening to the old stuff. Yeah, let's hear, let's hear. But nothing comes to mind yeah, right nothing. now, but I'll, I'll give it I to you. I don't know that song, Nothing Comes to Mind. <laughs> it's still coming, it's a mixtape, eh? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Morgan Gold, as we wrap up our conversation right now, what is the one thing that no one knows about you that you really want to tell people about who Morgan Gould is, you as a person, your football, etc.? People don't know that I'm hungry for success, you know. As I said, um, I'm, whether, it, whether it be my clothing brand, I'm, I'm success driven, I'm success hungry. I don't want to be known as he did it for the glory. But I want to be known as actually became a successful X, Y, Z. So for me, success is my biggest driver and, and, and also with all due respect, my family, my three kids, my wife, they, they're the ones that spur me on every day because when things are bad, they're the first ones. They see beyond my stress. And when things are good, they, they, they're also happy for me. So I think they, I must take off my hat for my wife and my three kids that I'm away from home right now, I'm 36, I could just I could have just decided to hang up my boots and spend more time with them, but... Do you FaceTime a lot with them? No, we don't FaceTime, but we talk a lot, you know. Um, I, I, I'd love to FaceTime, but it, it's just emotional for me if I FaceTime, if I can't... Like my son, my youngest son, he's... How old is he? He's three years old mm -hmm. now, so when he sees me, it's like he feels like I'm around, but I don't want to sell him that. I want, to, I want him to understand that I'm not around. Mommy's there and she'll look after them, and, which she's doing a good job. So right now at Stellenbosch, a big smile on your face, still having those butterflies when you, when you lace up. How would Morgan Gould want to be remembered as a soccer player in South Africa? You know when you buy a smashed car and you fix it up and it, you clean it up, you make it look, you take it to the best panel beaters, and someone else that doesn't know that that car's been smashed, written off, wants to buy that car. That's how I want to be remembered. I want to be remembered as a Rolls Royce that was parked off. No one wanted it, but the next owner is embracing what he's seeing, not of the past. So I want people to embrace the fact that I can do what the next does, but better, with more determined, more focus, more oomph, and just give it all that I have. And just lastly, before you go, how do you deal with disappointment? I put a smile on my face because, um, I, I just put a smile on my face because I know I'm going back there for a second or third or fourth time. That's right. not how, how you take the blow, it's how you're going to approach the next encounter with the very same thing that defeated you. I must say, very deep from you. You're a very deep individual. I never thought this of you. Well, uh, I've, been, I've been dealt a couple of blows, you know. Um, I missed out on the World Cup, AFCON. So for me, I could have retired and said, ah, I'm just doomed. But I looked and I was like, I'm not going down like that. Mama raised no fool, so... Your mom's also very close to you. Definitely, yeah, yeah, yeah. My mom was very, very close. Um, 
I uh, fight with her all the time because she wants me to call her every day and <laughs> I can't call her every day. I mean, I need to at least miss her to call her. So, but yeah, she's, she's, she's very close. And do you have a cheat meal? Yeah. Yeah, I do actually. <laughs> You're thinking which one? <laughs> uh, I do have a cheat meal, but it's a snack actually. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I just have a chocolate and a cold drink. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Morgan Gould, thank you so much for joining us right here on Marawa TV, man. And all the best for the upcoming season right here at Stanabash. No, uh, thank you. We need all the luck we can get. But uh, as I said, you, we create our own luck, so we're going to work hard. A hardworking man doesn't remember the words of Drake. He says he's a Rolls Royce that people might have just forgotten about. But once he shines, he's going to move on forever. May you be remembered and thank you so much for everything you do for the game. And thanks for joining us right here on Modawa TV. Ah, thank you for having me, guys. Joining us is Mark van Yerden. Mark van Yerden, thank you so much for joining us right here on Madawa TV. Thank you, Gushen, for having me. You've made a move to Cape Town at age 31. After leaving your club, you've rekindled with your former coach. Was it move easy to make to Cape Town? Yeah, I think it was um, pretty, pretty much a no-brainer for me. Um, you know, when Steve showed a little bit of interest, uh, you know, it was something that was really keen to me. Um, and we've got family down here as well, so you know, the move was pretty, pretty much uh, done and dusted when when it came up. If you look at your career and you look at Amazulu, you've had a phenomenal run there. You then went to Orlando Pirates. And since then, you've kind of been between those two clubs. What has been the most successful club for you and why? Yeah, look, I think, um, you know, I had a really long stint at, at Amazulu. Um, I made the national team there, uh, which, which was really successful in my career for me. Um, made the move to Pirates, things kind of didn't work out, but you know, I learned a lot. I gained a lot of experience there and, and professionalism. So, you know, between the two, you know, you, you pick up things from both clubs. Um, but in terms of my, my playing career, I think, you know, Amazulu obviously making the national team was, was where it was kind of the highlight of my, my career. Let's quickly go to your national debut against Burkina Faso. Yeah, when uh, it was us and the Springboks playing on the same day. Um, yeah, something I'll never ever forget. You know, stadium, 90 odd thousand people, you know, cheering for us. And, you know, just the whole grand occasion was, was something, you know, surreal to me and, you know, obviously for my family. Um, and a nice debut performance as well. So, you know, that's, that's one experience that will live in the, the memory forever. Growing up, did Mark van Nieden always want to be a professional soccer player? Yes, I think from the age of five I started playing soccer and, you know, that was, that was me. Eh? Soccer, day in, day out, back garden, you know, friends, 15, 20 of us in the back garden at home playing football. Um, funny enough, when I was at club level first, I really didn't want to go to trainings and stuff, but... I think it was always in my, my veins. My dad played football, my uncles played football, um, United supporters since I can remember. So, yeah, I think um, I wouldn't have gone any other way. That is Mark Van Yeren joining us right here on Marawa TV. Mark, if you look at yourself as a kid, your junior levels were all in Johannesburg. And then you came down to the coast. Yeah, look, um, I started at an amateur club called Robertsham. I went on to Super Sports Academy, I went to Tux's Academy and it was all Joburg, uh, Pretoria and then the opportunity arised to go down to um, Amazulu and there was clubs in, in Joburg that were interested. And I was always a brave young kid so you know I said to my parents look I want to go there. Clive Barker was the coach with Neil Tovey and I thought to myself you know what better way to learn and, and and start my my professional career than under those two two mentors and you know for me I don't think I would have changed much um, because I gained a lot of experience obviously from them and you know over 10 years later I'm still here so 
Your career moving to Orlando Pirates, just touch on that quickly. For any player to play for the big team, so-called big team, especially the Soweto teams, it's massive. To get a call up to go play for Orlando Pirates, how did you adapt to playing for a team like Pirates? Yeah, look, it's, you know, once I got the call from my agent to say, look, Pirates want to sign you, you got a medical, um, what are your thoughts? I immediately, you know, as any professional would do in South Africa, I say yes. Um, because it is, it's not only in South Africa that they're a big club continent, it's it's a giant. So, you know, it was it was almost a no-brainer for me. Um, I enjoyed my experience and I, I wish I had got a little bit more game time there to really prove my worth. But, you know, saying it again, I, I won't regret the move. Um, it was, at least I can say, you know, I, I tested myself, I went to a big club and I've played at the highest level. So, yeah, I'm, I'm grateful for that, uh, that opportunity in my life as well. At age 31, you still have an opportunity to play top flight football. Potentially, is your, your mind still set on just playing pro or making the national team again? Look, I, um, in the beginning of this year, not even this season, this year I've set myself some nice goals and one of the, the goals is to, to get back into the national team. Um, it, I want to go there and I want to you know, still contribute to, to, to the national team and, and for my country. So it's definitely a goal. There's, there's a lot of other little goals in between that. Um, you know, and it's, it's definitely something that's in my mind definitely in my mind and working hard every day to try and achieve it. You've moved now to Stellenbosch, your family's moved with you, you've got two kids, um, they age two and three, Madison and Eden. Madden and, Madison and Eden. And Eden. Yeah. Eden is two years old. Is he a future soccer player or how are you going to deal with being a pro and being a dad at the same time? Yeah, look, um, my family comes with me wherever I go, so dear to my heart. Eden being a soccer player, he likes to kick the ball now and again with dad, but you know, not no real he's gonna be a footballer, I said to to my wife, you know, if if he decides he wants to be it by all means. Um, you know, he's got a dad that's clued up in it and can push him in the right directions in, in all facets. Um but we'll see, you know. I'd I would love him to be a, a, a pro footballer, um, take off to his dad, but his choice at the end of the day. Now Mark and myself we've got something in common both our spouses names are Samantha. Oh, nice. So yeah both, <laughs> both our spouses name is Samantha. You're a real family man and also religion plays a big role in your life. Yeah my my family is is my cornerstone. Um, my wife is my best friend she's everything to me so you know without my family I, I'm pretty much nowhere and you know religion it's it's more of a faith thing for me um, because you know I support all religions, um, but you know faith is is a is a big big part in my life as well. A connection with God, a connection with Jesus, um, your spiritual being. Uh, I meditate daily, so you know it's it's a big big part of my life. How do you meditate? Uh, look, uh, I I just do my my own 20, 30 minutes um, quiet time. Sit down, close my eyes, let my mind be free, um, and and just try and connect with my spirit spirituality. Right now, joining a team like Stellenbosch, promoted to the PSL, top flight football. Your experience as an experience campaigner. How do you bring your experience to the youngsters within the squad? Yeah, look, I think it's just about um, teaching them, you know, the rights, the wrongs. Um, you know, and trying to impart some of the the life lessons you get out of football as well. It's it's, it's not all about on the football pitch. It's about off the football pitch. Um, what you eat, what you drink, how you sleep. You know, your daily activities. There's there's plenty that goes into it. Um, you know, how you you look after your body because at the end of the day, this is your body is your temple, and um, you know this is uh, your your main tool, and and you got to utilize it in a really uh, good manner and how you train and you know your recovery so on the pitch as well as off the pitch there's there's a lot of um, knowledge that that I can pass on to the boys and I'm trying to do so 
Um, and then obviously game situations and moments and, and stuff like that that they haven't got to experience, which pretty much, you know, after over a decade, I've, I've seen pretty much everything. So, you know, trying to find the balance between that and, you know, help, help the boys in that way. You're quite a sweet left foot, dead foot specialist there. when it comes to those free kicks. Mark Van Yedden's the man. I looked up to uh, David Beckham when I was younger, so he was, he was pretty much my role model. And, um, you know, I, I always loved the way he could cross the ball, free kicks, all those kind of things. So, you know, it's, it's been one of my weapons over the years and a lot of hard work and effort goes into try and maintain that and, and perfect it. Mark Van Yerden, as we wrap up our conversation right here on Marawa TV, what is the one thing that people don't know about you? The one thing that people don't know about me, um, I'm a very, I like to be in nature. I like to, um, I'm a very um, organic person, if that makes sense. And On well, talking about organic, you also found a farm in Cape Town where you and your family take vegetables from yeah, growing back to the table. Yeah, that's, that's, that's how we like to, to live. And you know, it comes back from looking after your body and, and how you, you maintain, you know, I have a philosophy, you know, in order for a good plant to grow, it needs good nutrients, it needs good sunlight and it needs good water. And your body is pretty much the same thing, and you know, it needs good nutrients from 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 your veggies, your fruits. Um, it needs the sunlight and it needs water. So, yeah, I'm 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 very in touch with that side of of it. In your car right now, music you listen to is there a CD, USB? I am listening to audio book at the moment. Uh, I am listening to the You Are the Placebo. Uh, before that, it was On Your Day, and before that was the 5 A.M. Club. A deep individual is Mark van Yerden, very spiritual, very grounded and very centered. Yeah, I like to, you know, I like, I've been through a lot in my life. Um, so I like to um, keep myself that way, keep myself humble, keep myself dedicated to being the best human being I can be. Any regrets so far in your career? I regret not playing overseas, uh, although I tried. Um, but, you know, I've had a good career. Uh, and hopefully many more years to come. All right, Mark Van Yeren, thank you so much for joining us right thank here you on Madawa TV, man. And all the best for the upcoming season right here at Stellenbosch. Thank you so much. I appreciate your time. And that is Mark Van Yeren right here on Madawa TV. As you heard, he's got a sweet left foot and David Beckham was his idol growing up. Thank you so much for watching this episode right here on Madawa TV.